how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Pillars of Eternity Definitive Edition. Here at the very end of 2020, completely blind, and yet I'm so remiss that um, I've never played this game. So I have... Pillars of Eternity, The White March Part 1, and The White March Part 2. I don't even know what that means. Um, but that's what I'm doing. I love Obsidian Games. I've always been excited to play it. It just never has happened, and because Epic gave it away for free, I really couldn't resist. Now, I ran a poll on my channel, and... Uh, this game, of the five games I offered as options to look into, was chosen as the overwhelming favorite, although there are some other games that were also voted highly that I will get into later. But here we are, at Pillars of Eternity. Now I've got a cup of tea set, and I'm ready to get going into this game. So let's start a new game. Now... Here's the deal. Um, I don't know much about the game, but I know that it's telling me that it wants me to go to easy. So it says e um, the easy difficulty requires minimal micromanagement and easily forgives mistakes in combat. It is strongly recommended for those who are new or recently returning to real-time party-based RPGs. Okay. So, I've played many real-time party-based RPGs, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, all of those um, games I took care of. I'm not saying I did it well, but I played them. Um, and <laughs> my buddy Jean-Luc Picard, who is watching my Underrail series, kind of challenged me to try the hard mode and so let's see normal says requires strategy and efficiency but forgives a few mistakes it is not recommended for newcomers and then hard says it's for infinity engine veterans who are looking for a challenge survival requires micromanagement and optimization of stats through items spells and abilities okay so Jean-Luc insisted that hard might make it interesting, but not overwhelming. And so I'm going to take this up. And the deal is like this, always. I'm playing blind. I'm not going to look at FAQs or wikis. But I will accept help from you guys in the comments section. So I will play and make stupid mistakes and not know what I'm doing and try to figure things out on my own and I will articulate my thought process as I'm doing that. If anything that's not too spoilery comes up that you feel you can offer me to help me get better at the game and to make better decisions in terms of strategy and how to take on combat, please leave those in the comments below uh, so that I can sharpen my tool set for this game and make it through. Now, I'm not going to do Path of the Damned um, because this gets out of hand where it's like enemies are receiving bonuses um, and it's punishing. So maybe if I beat it and I'm like, oh man, you know what I really want is a harder game, then maybe. But we're just going to go with regular hard here. I'm not going to go expert mode and I'm not going to go Trial of Iron either. But I am going to go through this game and we're going to go blind on hard and see what this does and let's go this is a nice looking temple sun streaming through incredible architecture as your character makes choices in conversations and quests, he or she will start developing reputations, both generally and with specific Five factions. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, hmm. their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. 
a dim lantern his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. That's scary. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. That's me, land and wealth. You have taken suddenly ill, uh -oh. sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Oh my god, what happened to me? Okay, so... Right away, I love this story. I also love that it's narrated. I figured that there's probably going to be a lot of text that I have to read. I do enjoy doing that, but I also love a great narrator, and that was a good one. So, I'm into it. I'm sick. I'm in the caravan. I need some land and wealth, but I'm I'm in no shape to get land and wealth. And then the stars aren't there to guide us. A tree's blocking the path. This looks really bad for this caravan. Let's go in. Okay. So, um, can I rotate you? Yeah, there we go. Spin you around. Sweet. All right. Well. Man, her armor looks awesome. I love the shine on that. I mean, the way that the metallic feature is coming across on her uh, chainmail there, it looks like a painted miniature. Um, it's great. All right, I'm going to go with a male just because I've been enjoying making characters that somewhat look like me, but I don't know how much um, I'm going to get to change uh, so we'll go to male. Yeah, looks like I get race, class, attributes, culture, appearance, and voice. Okay, great. Um, next, race, human. Uh, humans, commonly called folk, are the most common race in the direwood. The Adir Empire. Adir? Adir? Um, the narrator will help me with these. Ooh, ooh, look at this. You can mouse over. Uh, these blue words and get like a pop out with more text that's great okay so the dire wood is a colonial nation founded by settlers from the a dire empire following a series of conflicts with a dire the territory became independent in 2672 ai and is now ruled by a duck who is elected by seven earls that oversee its earldoms well, I've always wanted to live in an earldom, so here I am. Duck, Dooch, Duchy, Duke, not sure. Again, I'm praying that the narrator will say these words so I'll know the correct pronunciation. Um, so it's, they're the most common, Old um, Valia and the Valian Republics. Through, uh, though not as large as the towering Amana, humans are known for their strength and willpower. So it looks like they get a resolve and a might bonus. What about these Valian Republic? The Valian Republics is a mercantile power and former colony of a larger, more ancient nation, Old Valia. The Republics lie to the south of Direwood and Air Glanfath and are ruled by a duke elected by the uh, Consul... Oh boy. Consugali Asegia, a council of 14 dukes, including its five most prominent, the Duke's Bells. Or the Duck's Bells. We'll find out. All right, cool. Well, it's, a, it's an old power that used to be cool. Um, and they make some money selling stuff. Resolve. What does Resolve do? Resolve reflects the character's internal drive, determination, fearlessness, and the emotional intensity they can project to others. I always like to project a quite significant emotional intensity. Actually, that's the opposite. I'm very subdued. Uh, it can be useful for mental intimidation, leadership, and convincing performances. I see. 
In combat, it helps characters maintain concentration and contributes to the will and deflection defenses. So this is interesting. Um, because in some ways, you know, you're talking about... I'm coming from Dungeons & Dragons. I have experience. I started with Advanced D&D and &D 2nd Edition. And then have am playing now in 5th Edition. And so, like, I'm seeing leadership and I immediately think this is charisma. Um, and that also governs performances by bards and entertainers and stuff. But when I also see mental intimidation and then concentration it's clear to me that this that they aren't just like renaming the six basic attributes of D and D and they're kind of using those archetypes but putting their own spin on it. And so that's interesting. Might. Well this is gonna be straightforward, but let's see how they use might in this game. Might represents a character's physical and spiritual strength brute force as well as their ability to channel powerful magic okay so right away never mind it's not straightforward so might is not just strength it's like their ability to be strong with spirit or with magic during interactions it can be useful for intimidating displays and acts of brute force in combat it contributes to both damage and healing as well as the fortitude defense touche um okay or I could be this big, like, blue Draenei man. All right. Um, the Amaua? Amaua? I'm not saying that right, but we'll figure it out. The mighty Amaua are the largest of the kith races and are commonly found in or near oceans. Though not truly aquatic, ooh, I'm a merfolk person. They have an affinity for water, and many of their civilizations, such as Rautai, are based on naval dominance. They are known for unparalleled strength. Well, no, I'm not a merfolk. I'm just kind of like, I have an affinity to the water. So maybe my ancestors were underwater type. All right, so they get plus two might. Dwarf, awesome. By virtue of land covered and number of colonies settled, dwarves are the most well-traveled race in the world. Huh. They are commonly found in the Direwood and the Valley and Republics and almost any colonized land. Dwarves are known for their great strength and tenacity. So they have good might, but they have bad dexterity. It, and dexterity is an abstraction of a character's hand-eye coordination, balance, and overall grace. In interactions, it can be used for sleight of hand and fast reactions. In combat, it affects the character's action speed with all attacks, spells, and abilities, and contributes to the reflex defense. Okay, so dexterity is like the most straightforward of the abilities so far. It, it is exactly what you would expect of dexterity constitution. It is a combination of the character's overall health and stamina. Although it's not used much in interactions, it's sometimes checked to withstand pain or endure a physically taxing ordeal. In combat, it affects maximum health and endurance and contributes to the fortitude defense. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward as well. I could be an elf. Elves are the dominant race in Air Gla uh, Glanfeth and... The white that wends are extremely common in the direwood and a deer. Elves are known for their speed and intelligence as well as commonly isolationist nature. All right, so we've already read about decks. What's perception? It represents a character's senses as well as their instinctive ability to pick up on details. In interactions, it can be used to catch someone in a lie to make an observant comment about their appearance or to notice something happening in the background. In combat, it contributes to accuracy, the reflex defense, and grants bonuses to interrupt. Okay. Orlan. Ooh. Like a Spriggan or something? Or what is this? Orlans are the smallest of the kith races, although, uh, or though many cultures don't consider them to be civilized at all. 
also notable for their large ears, two-toned skin, and hirsute bodies. Orlons are commonly found in Air Glanfith. What is... Oh, I need to read about Air Glanfith. A territory comprised of the forest southeast of the Bale River, populated indigenously by a group of loosely affiliated tribes collectively known as Glanfithans and governed by a council of its six most powerful tribes. Air Glanfith is home to a large number of ruined Anguithan sites, which Glanfathans hold sacred. The ruins have been at the center of a number of large-scale conflicts with uh, dire wooden colonists whose settlements often encroach on Glanfath and territory and who frequently seek to plunder the ruins for their relics. Well, that's not nice. Um, the So they're found in Air Glanfath, the Iximidal Plains, and parts of the Direwood. They are known for their mental intensity and sharp senses. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And godlike. Whoa! Okay. The godlike are children of the kith... ...civilized races... ...who have been blessed with physical aspects associated with the gods, though some do not consider it a blessing. These aspects may take many forms, and often come with mystical powers... Aberrant head shapes are typical, and godlike are unable to wear protective headgear as it is near impossible to find anything that fits. Because of their unusual nature and their inability to reproduce, godlike are often viewed with fear and wonder. Huh. Alright, and they get dex plus one and intellect plus one. Intellect. Intellect represents a character's logic and reasoning capabilities. In interactions, it can be useful for deductions, sudden real realizations, and problem-solving. In combat, it contributes to the will defense and influences durations and areas of effect for all abilities and talents. Interesting. Alright. Well, I think I'm just going to be a plain Jane for my main character here. And be a human. And then recruit a band of kith and other races for more fun. All right. Oh, sub race. Cool. So I could be meadow, ocean, or savannah folk. Ocean folk, called Bandra, originated near the equator on the other side of the globe and are currently the most widespread human group in that region, but they have also migrated to the far reaches of the world. Ocean folk are the dominant culture in the Valian republics and are also common in the Direwood. Fighting Spirit. Once per encounter, five seconds after being reduced below 50% endurance, folk temporarily gain bonuses to accuracy and damage. All right. So... I like how they tell you what this means, but let's... All right, I'm not going to read that. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, endurance. Endurance represents a character's short-term survivability. Damage that is not absorbed by a character's damage reduction goes straight to their, health, uh, their endurance and health. Potions and healing magic, such as from a paladin, priest, or druid, can restore endurance in combat. When the character's endurance reaches zero, he or she will be knocked out. A knocked out character can be brought back in combat through the use of, re of a revive ability. Okay. Otherwise, characters will gain all of their endurance at the end of combat. Um, so... I'm not seeing, though... So you get knocked out when your endurance goes to zero. And then maybe you die if your health goes to zero. I'm not sh seeing the distinction further on between endurance and health. But, okay, we'll find it out. 
Accuracy is a part of almost every attack. It influences how likely the attack is to affect the target. Accuracy is defined primarily by a character's class and level, but it is also influenced by perception, talents, and other active effects such as spells or items. When an attack is made, the accuracy is compared to the appropriate defense on the target to determine how the attack roll will be, will be modified. If accuracy is above the target's defense, it will be more likely to result in a hit or crit, less likely to result in a graze or miss. Any ability or talent that does not use a weapon as a part of the attack gains a small accuracy bonus based on the level of the character. Interesting. So this is like governing, hitting with ranged weapons, melee weapons, spells, hexes, charms, all of it. Damage. Oh, there are eight damage types in Pillars of Eternity. Slash, Pierce, Crush, Burn, Shock, Corrode, Freeze, and Raw. Damage types are used to determine how easily a target resists damage of that type based on their damage reductions. A creature or suit of armor may be very resistant to one type of damage, but quite vulnerable to another. Some weapons or attacks may do multiple damage types or list an or between their damage types. When an ore is listed, the attack will always do the damage type that the target is most vulnerable to. Well, that's good. Raw damage is the only damage type that ignores all damage reductions and is generally associated with poisons and similar effects. All right. Um, okay. Meadow folk. Um, the most common humans in the direwood, the meadow folk, or Deerton have lived in that area for almost 2,000 years. Meadow folk traditionally live at the edges of elven forests, working in the open plains, hence their name. Most humans in the direwood are Thyrton. And then they also have fighting spirit. So this is the same. And then there's savannah folk, Natlin, come originally from just south of the equator, and with the exception of some groups that migrated north, have remained in the same location for over 10,000 years. The name Natlin literally means original, while quite common in uh, Red Ceres, Savannah folk are not usually seen in the Direwood and the Valian Republics. Uh, what? Where is Red Ceres, uh, or Reed Ceres? Direwood's neighbor to the north, Red Ceres is a nation firmly rooted in its Eoth Asian faith a fervor that took hold during the events of the Saints' War and remains even after the apparent death of Aeothus. And again, to all, if you've played this before, I apologize. I will get better with these pronunciations once I hear them pronounced within the game. All right, so I think Meadow Folk sounds fine. I'm like the most common of all commons. Okay. Now, it's time we've picked, you know, these parts of our starting kit, which were just our background and gender. Let's go ahead and do our uh, our class. So we've done sex and race. Let's do class. Okay. Um, I always love monks, but I don't know how they'll work in this game. I will probably, however, be a wizard. So let's just read what some of these different ones are. Um, so a wizard, the masters of academic magic. I mean, for a doctor incompetent, that's pretty much... I'm not a master, but I am academic. Uh, so this makes sense. I beat people to death with books and sometimes a staff. Wizards are students of arcane traditions that stretch back beyond the boundaries of recorded history. Wizards are a highly organized group, often forming academies or guilds devoted to research and development in magical studies and tend to favor environments where inquiry, experimentation, debate, and the dissemination of knowledge are encouraged. Yep, yeah, that's me. Many accomplished wizards eventually become known for their eccentricity, well, maybe, their egos, unfortunately, and their unquenchable interest in all things arcane and occult. I don't know about unquenchable. Um, starting abilities. Arcane assault, mid-range attack that hits a small area for raw damage and can 
leave targets days. Well, that's actually pretty good that it does the raw damage that they can't block. A hit is any attack roll that is between 51 and 100. When an attack scores a hit, it does standard damage and has a standard duration. Wow, interesting. So wait a minute. I'm rolling a 100-sided die, and it's a 50-50 shot if I hit or miss? It's actually a little bit more on the miss side, is it not, with 51 to 100? Or if, well, no, if it starts at 1, then this is fine. 1 to 50, 51 to 100, sure. Um, dazed. Victim's accuracy is reduced by 10. Dexterity, perception, and intellect are all reduced by 2. And attack speeds reduced by 15%. Not bad. Spells. Wizards have access to a variety of offensive and personal defense spells. Unlike priests and druids, wizards learn individual spells that they store in and cast directly from their grimoires. Grimoires can only hold four spells of each spell level, which motivates wizards to keep multiple grimoires for different needs. Every two levels, wizards gain access to an additional set of spells. That's interesting. So this big-ass book that I've got here can only hold four spells of each spell level. Well, probably more than one page. Um... They can automatically learn up to one spell of any level they can access every time they advance. Wizards also have the option of learning spells from grimoires they find or buy. Initially, their spells can be cast a limited number of times per rest. Okay. As wizards gain power, their weaker spells eventually shift to per-encounter use. That's cool. They get a plus two to lore, plus one to mechanics... They have bad endurance, bad health, bad accuracy, and bad deflection. Fantastic. What is a cipher? Mind hunters? Oh, they're like psionics or something. Or. Interesting. It's a chanter. Huh. Maybe, maybe these look more like, I mean, I'm just by the equipment, more like hybrid types. Um, okay. Well, I know myself, and... I'm going to go as the academic and see if I can win with books. They've got me this far. All right. Um, oh. All right, so now I'm clicking my spells. Wizards have access to a variety of offensive and personal defense spells. Unlike priests and druids, wizards learn individual spells that they store in and cast directly from their grimoires. Um, okay, I read this, actually. All right, then never mind, sorry. Don't need to read that more. I thought maybe it was different, but it's not. Okay, um, so I get to pick four spells. But I did start, I did get that one spell, I believe. Um, and these are all first level spells. Okay, what would I want? Now let's look at these spells. Arkhamur's Dazzling Lights overwhelms anyone in the area of effect with brilliant and bewildering pyrotechnic display, decreasing their will and leaving them dazed. Um, right, so this is like color spray. Chill fog calls a blindingly white icy fog into existence, inflicting blindness and freeze damage over time to any in the area of effect. All right, I like this. This seems like a good one. No, I don't want that. Uh, I'm just clicking on it so I can read it. Parasitic Staff. Console Hot's Parasitic Staff. Creates a glowing quarterstaff of pure energy for the wizard to wield, granting a bonus chance to hit and giving the wizard endurance with each successful strike. That's interesting. So it's like you can become kind of tanky or, or heal yourself. Eldritch Aim grants the caster otherworldly sight, resulting in preternatural accuracy for a short period. Okay. 
Fan the flames, creates a cone of fire in front of the caster, causing burn damage to anyone in the area of effect. All right. So we're going to go with... I know it's corny, but I'm going with Chill Fog and Fan the Flames right now. Some damaging things. Um, and let's just see what some of these other ones are. Minor Missiles. Summons three missile spells that batter the target. Yeah. I mean, Magic Missiles is always a favorite spell of mine, so let's do it. It's slicking. There's an oil spell. That's always good. Um, all right, let's look at these other ones. Fleet Feet. Unnatural speed, increasing their movement rate. It's good for running. Ghost Blades. If All right, they inflict damage. I, I, if I'm going to take Fan the Flames, Chill Fog, and Minor Missiles, like I have um, my, Chill Fog is an AoE, so is Fan the Flames. Um, with its cone. So I have like a an AoE that is a two point five meter radius, so like a circle, and then a cone, and then a single target magic missile. So I've got a lot of damage, so I need one like utility spell I would like. Um what's wizard's double? Cast a duplicate to distract enemies, granting the caster a high deflection bonus until he, he or she is hit or crit. That's interesting. Shield. Um, yeah, this seems more straightforward. It just gives me damage reduction and a concentration bonus. It's either a spirit shield or this parasitic staff, where it's like I can hit people and heal myself, but I probably want to be cowardly hiding um, behind things and slinging spells out. So that's good. I could take Jolting Touch if I wanted, like, you know, Shocking Grasp and wanted to electrocute them, I imagine... But let's just go with this. Let's go with Chill Fog, Fan of Flames, Mendeletta's Minor Missiles, and Spirit Shield. We can always change it later, but I like a defensive spell and three different kinds of damage spells. Okay. And that's right. I also... Where's the spell that I get no matter what? This one, Arcane Assault. And so this is like um, a two per encounter ability that I can use. And these are um, rest abilities. Okay. Anyway. Ooh, I love this. That they put um, what they recommend off to the side for the min-maxing. Okay. So we've already looked at the description of all of these stats. And I'm a human, so I get this bonus to resolve and might. We're going to pump might. Okay, this looks like one for one for these stats. It's not escalating in price. Um, and then I'm guessing that the gold star... Yeah, it says highly recommended versus... Um, this silver star, which just says recommended. We're going to go ahead and with this gold star, it says um, 13 plus 1 for being a human equals plus 12% damage and healing. That's really good. Intellect gives you a bonus to area of effect and duration. That's insane. So let's boost our intellect incredibly to get bigger area of effect. Um... I'm happy with that. What does dexterity give? It just gives you a little speed. And then I'm going to go to might. Yeah. I'm going to go might again. Is it 3% every time? It is. It doesn't seem to be giving diminishing returns at all. And I'm going to go intellect one more time. So I'm in. I'm going to be 12... Uh, 17 and 17 with a 12 here. I could probably have a higher dexterity if I wanted to move faster and dodge and things, but I'm going to go with just big old spells. Okay, next. Um, those are my attributes. Okay, I'm going to select my culture, and it gives me a, a bonus at the bottom. So... Um, All right, so I could do uh, the Living Lands or Old Valia. 
And it says, um, once the crown jewel of the southern seas, Ovalia is now the crumbled remnants of an empire warring merchant nations, counting many humans and dwarves among their ranks. Um, there's still forces to be reckoned with and they're proud of their rich cultural heritage or the living lands is the mountainous region renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The living lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. Let's go with snobby, snobby background. Like, our old traditions are awesome. Please stop plundering us. I know we've collapsed, but respect us and love us. Okay, so we're going with Old Valia. Next. Sweet Moses, background. Well, um... Aristocrat, you've lived your life amongst nobility. Your days have been marked by lavish meals and extravagant parties. Your conversations peppered with talk of pedigree and bloodlines. That sounds boring. Um, artist, you've always felt driven to express yourself creatively. The structure and rigid control of others, uh, of other pursuits, has never satisfied in the same way. Kind of like that. Um, eh, troublemaker. There isn't like a scholar one. I mean, aristocrat's probably the the closest to it. So we're just gonna go with artist. I like it. Hey, here we go. All right. So what kind of portraits do we have here? This portrait is actually pretty good. I wish I could, you know. Let's see what else we got. Oh, we've got a bunch of faces. This might be it. This is very close to my avatar. I like to try to make myself look like my avatar. Now, that's a very scary looking spellcaster. Nice. Eh, a little too old. Um, well, that looks like me, but he looks he's got a ponytail. Oh, okay, we've moved over into the uh, pictures that I would associate with women, and that's that's fine in its own right, but I'm going to have a different kind of photograph here. Let's see. See what we can get. Oh, my sweet Moses. I mean, that looks... That looks pretty good. Alright. This might be it. For now. Let's see if what we can do with um, our facial hair. Can I zoom in at all? No. Um, but that is good facial hair. Okay. That's actually pretty good. Alright, and then what about just my hair in general? Can I do better than mullet? What is this? Oh, God. Let's see what we got here, huh? This is a strange. Um... Oh, these are colors of my clothing. But not. Okay. Um, that's cool. Okay. Here we go. Here. Oh, my sweet Moses. That's too blonde. Um... Wow. Wow. Uh, the light is, there we go. That's, that's probably as good as we're going to do there in that regard. Um, skin, is that as pale as I can get? Okay. 
And then secondary color. Let's go with like a nice uh, darker blue, I guess. And then let's see. How are we doing? What about our head? Yeah, let's change that up. I like this one. Slightly concerned. Okay. Good. This is good. Um, Alright, we're going to go with this one. There we go. That's better. Okay. Is that the right picture? I mean, I guess it is in terms of trying to match this. All right, perfect. Well, let's just go with it. It's not perfect, but it gets us there. We even have the same armor. Look at that. Um, okay, next. And um, let's see what, what I can sound like. Oh, I shall lead us. Oh, no, that's no good. I'll teach you a lesson. They'll never know I'm here. Hey there. Watch and learn. I like this one. Smooth. What's benevolent? Ah! I'm here. I'm flattered. Well? Yeah! Shh. Stand together. Nah. Show them how it's done. Yeah. Let's be smooth. Name, Doctor Incompetent. All right. Perfect. Well, everyone, it took us a moment to get this character creation done because, well, there were a lot of choices to make. It was very, very involved. But I think we did it. We have created our level one wizard named Doctor Incompetent, and we're getting into the story, and I think this is a perfect place to end the first episode. Before we begin and through the character creation. Everyone, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. I hope um, your Pillars game is going great if you're playing. And I will check you all in the next episode when we see what we can do about this sickness and move on with Dr. Incompetent and smashing people to death with this book. All right, everybody, take care.